Let's go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to Don Cherry's Grapevine podcast. And we just had a wonderful a holiday that you especially like, Dad. St. Patrick's Day, one of your favorite holidays. When I, and- was, when I was playing, it was bad. <laughs> and all the players, even if they weren't, we, we all, I, it was an excuse. Eh? That's an excuse to get drunk. Well, I'm looking at a beautiful uh, floral arrangement yeah. that was sent to you by a friend, a, pa- a friend and all that uh, has. Michael Henry. Yeah. And, uh, quite remember. the array of flowers, green and orange and all. And you, uh, I remember that's a big significance, save the, oh, the yeah. orange and green because of your, you, you used to work for. Kodak, Kodak's construction company, which was Ridge, Ridge Construction, Con- Ridge construction in Rochester. Rochester, New York. And you were the guy that handed out the... Well, I, one year I, I was in charge of the tools. I don't know how I got that job. Whitey Smith gave it to me. Your best friend. Yeah, and um, Captain Whitey Smith. He was the boss. And I remember Freddie McGuire. He worked there too. And he used to bug... He thought he was bugging me. He wasn't. I didn't. And he painted his... Um, you know, I must have said something about the Queen or something, and, and naturally he's from Ireland. He didn't like the Queen, uh, Southern Ireland. And he, he painted his helmet green, and he painted a harp on it and, you know, the whole deal. And, but he was from Ireland. And um, so to bug him, I painted my helmet orange. And now orange is, is a big deal over there, you know. The, the right, because a lot of people don't realize, like in Ireland— Green symbolizes Catholics, right? Yeah. And orange symbolizes Protestants. Yeah. That goes back to a thousand bicks through down their sticks, the Battle of the Boyne. That, that's the song. Well, thank goodness to... you weren't going to sing the old orange flute, Dad. No. I can't, you can't sing that nowadays. Yeah, I should tell that story sometime. <laughs> oh, well, what happened was, I, I knew the old orange flute. I know in the county. Oh, no, 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 it's very politically incorrect now. Oh, I just started it. Okay. Oh, okay. In the county Tyrone, in the town of Duncan. Anyhow, Ron Harrison was the uh, head of the, uh, he, he was head guy. Well, he was the director, I guess. No, well, I guess he was the head guy now that I think. What, in Hockey Night in Canada? Yeah. Yeah, he was, Ron Harrison was executive producer. Oh, yeah. I should. With Moldstar. He was a great guy. And he is a great guy. Uh, he fell down a stairs. Did you know that? I remember a guy telling me he fell down the stairs and broke bo- both his legs or something. Anyhow, he was a great guy, and he was he was the head of the uh, Hockey Night in Canada. And, and he said, well, we had about 10 minutes, so we could all sing a song. So, I, you know, just to fill in, I, it sounds ridiculous, but it's it's true. Now, I was on the ice, so I, as a joke. So I, I, I thought it was, he says, okay, sing a song, Doc. So the only song I really knew, really, I knew a lot of songs, but, but I, well, I said, I'll sing the old orange flute. So I sang it with a Boston accent and, or Irish accent and the colony. And so nobody, you know, they, nobody listens or anything like that. Oh boy, did I get a lot of mail yeah, it's after a, that. It's a very anti-Catholic song. Well, it, it's, it, it's, and, 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 you know, they still march. I think they used to march, uh, the Roman Catholic uh, and over in Ireland, they used to uh, the old, the Orangemen used to walk, they used to have a bowler hat on, but dressed in black suits and a black tie, and they used to and uh, they and they march to the old orange flute. Yeah, but get back to the the story. So the, oh the yeah, guy, so the, story. the the he painted his helmet green, and then you were you were English, so you painted your tools. Well, and, and you know I we used to bug each other all the time and everything. I don't know. He was serious. I was just kidding. And a safety guy, this is a true story, a safety guy saw my helmet from a distance. You couldn't miss it. It was orange. And, yeah, no, I think I should have had it orange. And if you look at all the highways when they have construction or anything that you want that's safety, it's always orange. Cause you, and he, he saw it, and he saw it. He was the head of the you know. Because it used state. to be yellow. It used to be yellow. Yeah. And sometimes they have yellow like now. But when they have construction where they really want you to look and everything on the roads and everything, it's always orange. So, in your in for your relatives, who's Irish? I know you have Irish and Catholic. No, we came from uh, 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 cherries that, uh, that my grandfathers came from uh, uh, Ireland and uh, the and during the potato famine. But uh, so, is your on your dad's side? Dad's side, yeah. Well, the cherry name is Irish. It's come from County Cork, <laughs> anyhow. Anyhow, getting back to what we started from, the players used to, every player, 
And uh, well, I remember speaking about. We'll do that again. Uh, about uh, we had in Rochester next door. We had nice neighbors called the McGivens. McG- McGivrens. McGivrens. Oh yeah. They, on Elm and, Drive. And you guys were always kind of fooling around with that. And I remember he put an Irish flag up, and then you went and got a Union Jack. Yeah. And you got it a little bit higher. And then he, the next day he got a pole and put it a little bit higher than the Union Jack. And you went and got a couple of hockey sticks and nailed them together. And went nice and high. I forgot about that. And then I, I think they went up about ten feet, and then finally his <laughs> fell over. So that was it. So you, well, you, yeah, and McGivens. Did I you remember his wife's name? I, I can't remember his wife's name, but she was a real. I used to babysit for their kids and all this, and I remember mom telling me the story where his wife, his wife, and when they were having coffee with yeah, mom, and, and Slapshot, yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, Slapshot picked that up, uh, you know, with the yeah. with the big dog, and I'd come home, and I was covered in sweat because I had. Not the job giving out the tools, but I used to I'd be covered in sweat and, you know, from sweating all day. Well, you're work, working from construction. Yeah, like Dell. I, do you sweat, Dell, or, uh, yeah? Dell <laughs> breaks out in a sweat, Dell? Oh. <laughs> Anyhow, I used to be covered in sweat, and I used to, and it used to be, you could sit, the houses were close, and used to sit on the thing, and I'd take my boots off. Because it was like a stoop. You walked in, and there yeah. were three steps going up, and, and then steps going down in the basement, so you were like at the side door. And, and, and walking the, in. Right. And the side door was maybe, you, there was just a driveway and then their kitchen, yeah, kitchen window. And their so kitchen window, window was right there. Overlooking. And, and Blue would come and, you know, I think she was licking, she never give me a kiss, but she was licking the sweat off me. And I, and she used, and I used to say, oh, isn't she a sweet, baby, beautiful little girl, you know. I miss you. I miss you all day working and I, and I think, <laughs> and would you, would you give me a kiss? And I said, I just, and so Rose is, uh, the, the wives of the, the neighborhood had a uh, coffee and, and they were talking, discussing husbands and she's, and the one husband says, well, your husband is so affectionate when he comes home. And Rose said, are you kidding? He doesn't even shake my hand. And she's, well, I hear him. Every, that is a lie. She's because I hear him every night saying how much he loves his little girl. <laughs> and it was blue. That yeah, Bob goes, she's talking to the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's talking to the dog. Well, anyhow, let's talk about uh, um, Campbell was good again last night. Uh, you know, he knocked around the, he knocked around the um, Jack Campbell. Yep. Played for Windsor. Yeah, it's got two shutouts in a row now. Played for Windsor and then went up to Sudbury or the Sioux and played for Dubas up there for a while. Yeah, that's how he, he knows him. And uh, so he's won two. Freddie Anderson was kind of struggling, Dad. So, but you know, he's in a funk. He's he, in a funk. Yeah, but you know, first two shots on him are tippins, and they're blaming him on the, the, the <laughs> yeah, on the I had on the, the lap Friday. In the pay, you're right. There were tippins, and I, maybe one could uh, out of. But uh, but uh, do you? But if you're if you're Dubas, do you run with Campbell now? Oh, or yeah. uh, uh, Keith, do you run with Campbell? Yeah, I go with him now. I mean, yeah, you got to go with him to get two shutouts. But you got to get, you got to get, um, you have to get uh, Anderson back in there because he's a, he, he's a number one guy when he's hot. But we never know. But well, uh, Campbell, he can't beat it. And you know, he knocked around. He was, he knocked around too. Uh, he's like Mike Smith. He, it takes him a little while to get. Uh, all goaltenders are like that. And. So are they still debating? Are you saying that they're still debating who's going to be the goalie in the playoffs? Or well, we don't know. I mean, this. So guy, they still don't know. You still think that's well, up for debate? I mean, two shutouts in a row. I mean, I'm an Anderson guy, but uh, when a guy gets two shutouts in a row, he's a pretty cocky guy. I see him winking last night and everything. Anyhow, the Leafs won. They were just in a funk for a while, and they were they were a better team last night. Of course, they're at home, and uh, Vancouver. They lost to Canadians, and Canadians are without uh, without Toffoli, which was their number one scorer. But you can't blame Hope beyond that. He he held them in the game. Yeah, Carey Price again, not not a great. Well, he didn't. He, he won. He had five uh, guys go in him on that uh, OT. We what do you, whatever you call it shootout now, and he, he he if he ever gets in the groove, if he ever gets like he was, like about. But all you got to do is make the playoffs with him. Yeah, well, you make the playoffs. Boy, I'll tell you, I'd I'd hate to play him in the playoffs if he ever gets back in the groove again. Well, we said that last year, and everybody was laughing. I mean, oh, Pittsburgh, four straight. And we said, "Eh, you know, playing, you know, Price, this might be his time to shine. And sure enough. Well, he may be like, it could be like Patrick Roy. When he, 
what do you, they won 10 OT games in a row. Or but something. last year, was he up for his contract? No, 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 he's no. got a big long oh, wait, he's contract. Had it for a while now? But this is the time, this is the time that he could win, because you know they they play the, they they don't play uh, they play amongst each other and then they go down. I think they play the um, they play quarter- the East, so they'll play the winner out of the Washington Boston. Yeah, they'll if, play if uh, Boston makes the playoffs. Yeah, well, Boston, boy, you know I have to t- you know I have to tell something if somebody's listening. You talk to the sons, and maybe their sons are listening too. I hope. How many people listen to this show, Tim? Uh, we're at we're zeroing in on two point seven million downloads. And what countries? So we are number one in Can- of course Canada is our number one country, U.S. and then the U.K. and then if we follow by Japan, Australia, United Arab Emirates, Sweden, Germany, Mexico, Norway, Russia. I wonder if Putin's listening. Russia. <laughs> Putin's uh, probably listening. Uh, <laughs> South Korea and Hong Kong are our tops. Oh, isn't that great, eh? So why was I ta- Oh, yeah. Now, if you're listening and you've got a son playing hockey, or if you're playing hockey, well, I don't know. It always happens. I notice this here when I see a guy. A guy, okay, here's the deal. A guy looks up, he, he's got the puck, and he, he sees everybody's covered. So what he's going to do, he's got to make the red line. He, he doesn't want to pass to anybody because they, they're all covered. So he tries, to, and it's funny thing is, it's always the left side, left defenseman. I don't know why, but it's always the left. Now, Tenardi, uh, Gerard grabs the puck, and he looks up, and everybody's covered. I'm, I, I saw the game. So he tries to make the red line. Now, Tanev is on, he is a, I think that's how you pronounce it. He is a winger that plays, I, I forget his first name, but anyhow, Brandon, Brandon Tanev. He is a tough guy. He's not too big, but he, he led Pittsburgh in hits. So you know he can hit. So he's the left winger. Or right winger. Well, it doesn't matter. He, I know that he, uh, when, when I saw the hit, I said, there is something wrong. So, and what happened was he knew that Gerard Tenorti had hurt Malkin before. Tenorti tried to make the red line. And you're on the left, you're on your left, and you try to dump it in because you don't want icing. As he dumps it in, Tanif hit him. Holy, and did he hit him. I mean, he really, he hit him and looked like he lifted him up and threw him into the boards. But the funny thing is, when you hurt, when you, Tenardi should have known if he hurts Malkin, some tough guy on that team is going to get you. And did he get him? Oh boy! And I don't know. Tenardi's not back. I don't think no. he'll be back for a while. And you got to be careful when you try to make that red line. Be, don't uh, when you try to when I tried to make the red line. I always protected myself if a guy was coming, especially if I heard a guy the time the the, the 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 period before it was. And Tenardi's going to be a long time. And and Tanev wasn't he wasn't suspended. He got the five minute major. I mean, he had to. Get, had to carry him off. It was a tough one. And all I'm saying is, if you have a son that plays defense, and when he tries to go to that red line, don't keep, don't just forget it. A guy coming, and I. It's hard to explain. Yeah, yeah we've seen it a few times watching minor midgets. The guys are trying to make the red line to dump it in, so they don't ice it. And they seem when they shoot it, they're kind of off balance. They want, they're on their left, and yeah. it's always. It seems to be. It's always on on the left side. I don't know why. And then and then so and you're usually near the boards, right? Yeah, yeah. and you're not you're near the board because you're making for the boards. You, you know, you may take a B and you go near that boards. And boy, did he ever hit him! Anyhow, be careful when uh, when you, if you're t- if you got a son and he plays that defense and he looks up, everybody's covered. Be careful making that trying to make that red line. Well, Dad, we like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. A First Nations own online casino and sports book tailored for Canadians, which means they take Canadian money, which is good. Shows up, uh, sign up now and enter the promo grapes and they'll match your deposit up to $500. You get 15 spins on the big wheel to get some big money. And if your first time you do a sports bet, they'll give you $25. And we bet uh, Toronto was going to win on Saturday after they lost against Calgary. We thought mm, they're, they'll they're, they'll be ready, and so we did. We did. Well, good at- you know, you know, jump in about Jack Campbell again. Uh, I mean, the guy is four zero and zero. You said, are we going to use him in the playoffs? I mean, I, goals against average, I think, is one, 
and nine six seven five save percentage. So who are you going to lose if he, if he keeps going? And like I said, he get knocked around. So you got to say Edmonton's kind of on a tear. Connor McDavid again nine uh, nine points in five games, and uh, he per- is so far ahead of everybody else. I mean, you know, I noticed after he's not uh, he's not celebrating after, and you know, I always I never liked the guy. Why why the players like Bobby so much is because he never after a goal he he put his head down he didn't want he, and I remember they asked Mickey Mantle the baseball player the beautiful boy he could hit, hit a ball he was a beautiful guy I went to see him play and they asked him why do you run around the bases with your head down he says uh, I says I I didn't want to I didn't want to embarrass the pitcher I mean. That's why they loved Mickey Mantle. Yeah. So, um, you know, Dad, like I was watching it and and watching the, you know, the game last on Saturday, and you know, Connor McDavid was going around. Now, when Bobby Hull used to play, there was a guy that would be would just follow him around the ice, right? Pronovo, Pronovo, Mar, uh, not it was the Pronovo was John, I think it was, and he, he'd sit on his back, but you can't do that with McDavid. I mean, he, you just couldn't get a guy to say, look, just. Follow him. Just anywhere he goes. He, just anywhere you go. You just, can't. You know, because he's all over the place. And, you know, I watch them. I've been mean, watching them very carefully. Well, we watched them in Bantam and that. I didn't think he would be that good. <laughs> I, I knew he'd be good, but I knew he'd be that good. He takes short steps. Little short steps. And he takes off about 90 miles an hour. And he seems to be in the right place at the right time. But... I, 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 you can't, you couldn't have a guy just stand. I, they did that with Bobby Orr, eh? They yeah. said, we're just going to stay. With, so he just stood still at the blue line. And the rest of the guys. Didn't well, play. I remember he was doing that and I was watching him. And then he'd go stand by another guy. He'd go stand by, let's say it was like Pittsburgh was doing it, right? So they had a Pittsburgh winger standing next, like cover Bobby. So then he would go and stand by their winger. So now you got two guys on him. So now it's like, a, you know, it's like a four on three. So. Matt, Matt, you know, not to, not to bore people again, but I just it just shaked my head. The defenseman getting forty six goals, and I read in the paper where a guy's getting fifty goals and, or fifty points, and he's going to win the Norris Trophy. And I think Bobby have forty six goals. I mean, eighty nine assists. Uh, him and Coffee were uh, plus one hundred and twenty three. It's unbelievable. Anyhow. Uh, McDavid, there's no way you could cover McDavid that way. Now, Ovechkin, uh, I was the guy that said that he didn't seem interested, and and you hit him, and you wake him up. You you should just, he's one of those. That's guys. what happened in New York. He was fast asleep, and boys, I don't know who it was, but somebody really, boy, somebody cor- really corked, corked him. him. <laughs> bing, bing, it went to nothing. Ovechkin gets two goals, and he, he's got a temper. I mean, Damn. but uh, you hit him, you wake him up. So just let him sleep. So I'm going to tell a funny story that happened this on uh, this week. That uh, one of my favorites, and I think the guy that's going to come out of the draft over the next couple of years as the best guy, is uh, Jamie Drysdale. Oh yeah, you mentioned you've been meant, you've been talking about this guy ever since. He, he, I think he played for Marley's, didn't he? Marley's he, he wore number four. So oh, defenseman wearing number four, <laughs> and but he was like Bobby Orr back Well, I was saying when you were mentioning that, I said, we had a Mississauga Ice Dogs. His last name was Orr, and yeah. he wore number four. And I go, now that's pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so he uh, so he played his first game with Anaheim, the Anaheim Ducks, and he scored. He got a goal and an assist, and won, they won 3-2. And I think he got first star. You've yeah. been mentioning this guy. You, you liked him in, when he played in the junior tournament. Yeah, I think he was the best defenseman in the world juniors. And um, so, but here's a funny story that happened. So he he scores a goal, and the goal he scored was he kind of got the puck from the point, and he he took a good, nice, hard wrist shot, and it went in. But they, the official goal scorer, gave it to this other duck standing in front of the net. So he got an assist, but he didn't get the goal. So they dropped the puck. And about two minutes later, uh, a guy named Trevor Z- uh, Trevor Zergis, who's a rookie, played for the U.S. Olympic or uh, junior team this year. He scores his first NHL goal ever. So then the of- goal official said, "No, it wasn't tipped in." So Jamie Drysdale got the goal. So it was his official goal. So both those players scored their first NHL goal with the same puck. 
So who gets the puck? So who gets the puck? <laughs> what did they do? I think they they did a King Solomon and cut the puck in half. <laughs> I think, think I don't know. I, that's what I said. So I don't know if they were joking or not, but that's. Oh, you know, that what, what do be... you do? You, I don't think that ever happened before. You know, it's funny thing is, Jamie. Do I, you know, I hate to say it. He's out in Anaheim, and unless they win the cup, nobody ever hears about anybody that go, goes to Anaheim or any of those places out there. Well, I suppose they hear them out there, but they never hear about them in hockey. But isn't that the, whose who's job is it when there's a milestone and you get to keep the puck? Isn't it the trainer? Like when you were at the Bruins, if anyone yeah, got a milestone. Yeah, one of the trainers. The yeah. trainer's got to yeah. grab the puck and get it and make them have yeah, a new he, one. He, he didn't score it. They, 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 the, the, when he scored, they, 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 didn't, they, they said no, it was tipped in, so yeah. it wasn't so he didn't score. Yeah. So. You know, and, and back, back in, not to get back in, but Bobby used to give up, uh, he'd score, and he'd say, no, the guy tipped it in front. He could have had 50 goals. Well, he's, uh, uh, the, J- Jamie Drysdale, he was, as I say, I think he's going to be, he's going to be a star again, but he'll be out in Anaheim, so nobody will hear about him. But, uh, and, you know, it's funny that there was like three years in a row that we went out watching guys, dad, that were really good defensemen, and he was one. And now they're talking about the draft this year that a guy named Owen Power that we saw played for the Mississauga yeah. Reps, he could be first overall. Big guy. Big guy. And he could be first overall. Or a guy named Brent Clark, who plays uh, for the Barry Colts. He saw him play. He played on Don Mills with um, Shane Wright. You're hearing this for the first time. You'll hear it. So he could uh, he could go first overall. But, uh, yeah, so it's fun to see those. Uh, you know, I was just saying, sometimes it's not fun going to watch the games in February. It doesn't really mean much. And no, it's freezing they, cold. They're, t- they're it, tired, eh? Yeah, and you get there the game at 9.30. game's supposed to start at 9.30, and there's a 45-minute delay for something. Now the game's 10.45. And they've been sitting in the dressing room. You're sitting, in, and then the kids and it's are— cold. It's freezing cold and, and all that. But it is fun, though, to look and see a guy like— you. Tell know, a story you, about uh, Jamie— uh, about his mother. About you mom. don't fool with the mothers at these games. Yeah, this is kind of a f- funny but not funny, but we were at the Silver Stick Tournament in Whitby, and uh, the rinks are kind of small there because most of the scouts, we don't like staying or sitting around the parents. Oh, I've been told. You guys yeah. like it up top with your black coach yeah. judging everyone. Well, so we just, you know, you don't want to, because if you don't want to slip and say something, right? And, and well, I never did. So, so, we, <laughs> so we always stay away from the parents. But in these in this tournament in uh, in Whitby, it's the rinks are kind of small. There's not a lot of seating, so we went to see the Marlies play, and he and Jamie Drysdale was on the team, and I was with another scout who's from up north, and he's kind of a he's a joker, kind of a funny guy, he tries to be funny, and so we sit down, and um, there's a lady next to us, and we're watching, and she's clapping with the Marlies, and not being just very low key, not you being, never you know it's funny thing. We hear about in the paper how bad the parents are. We we've been going now how many twenty some years. I've never heard I've never heard one parent ever yell at at the at the referee or no. Anything. They're always pretty. It's pretty quiet. She was very low key, and so the scout that I'm with he says, oh, he goes, who um, he says, uh, is your son on the ice? And she says, yeah. He goes, my son plays for the Marlies. He's number four, and the as a goes, joke. Yeah, and the, as a joke, the the. Scout goes, oh, yeah, I know him, Jamie Drysdale. He's not very good. And you should see the look on her face. Like, what, uh, uh, and he goes, oh, no, I'm just kidding. He says, look, he says, in four years, I'll be watching him in the National Hockey League. And sure enough, four years, he gets his first NHL you goal. Don't fool but, with, the, with, the, with the mothers. Yeah, it didn't go over very – didn't go no, over. No, it went over like a lead, lead balloon. balloon. Yeah. Well, Sutter's doing pretty good. I think he's I think he's 5-2 and two now, isn't he, or 4-2. and two. What is he now? Five, four, and two. I think he's uh, five, five and, and two. two. Five and two, pretty good. Uh, and you know, you, you have to feel for guys being fired. I remember, I remember, I remember the first time I was fired. Awful words. Yeah, you, well, you got to look that Ralph Kruger from Buffalo. He he was fired. Yeah, he got fired too. You, you know, he didn't have a he he didn't have a chance. I mean, he, you know, I don't know what the heck happened. Stahl is a good hockey player. Hall is a good hockey player. Eichel's a good hockey player. And they never did anything. I, I just don't get it. I just, I just don't get it. Anyhow, I remember the first time I got fired. Honestly, this, this, this is true, Cindy. I mean, I think I've told it before, but it's, it, it is so funny. Or I think it's funny. Now I think it's funny. But that didn't. And I remember Doug Adams was the general manager, and I did not get along with the Vancouver Canucks at the time. 
And you were coach in Rochester, right? I was coach in Rochester. And we almost made it, eh, Tim? We were seven points, 17 points behind. Last game. Uh, Came down to the last, last game. game. Last period. And your buddy was coaching, remember? Lloyd Smith. And, 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 and it didn't, that game didn't mean anything to him. Didn't mean, he was playing Cincinnati, Cincinnati Swords, I think. Yeah, yeah. it was yep. a farm team. Of, and he was married to another Hershey lady, right? Uh, Audrey du- uh, Duck Gundecker. That's right. So, so he this put game in the, means everything to you and nothing to him, and he beat you. Yeah, but he didn't mean to. Oh, he didn't no, he didn't. He put to. in the he put in his backup goalie, and when you put in a backup goalie, the backup goalie always says, "Oh yeah, put me oh, in." Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, I see. And it he, works you against you. You couldn't put a P by him, and um, I'm going back and but and I remember Doug Adams coming in my ho- uh, hotel room. I was having my nap as usual, and he says, "You're playing." I'm not. Na- I'm not naming the Serge Aubrey. I think I was. And he yeah. hadn't played in a month, which wasn't. I said, "No, I'm not." I knew I was fired right away. I was going to get fired anyhow. Not awful. So Vancouver, you were the farm team for Vancouver. I was the farm team for Vancouver, and Vancouver gave the uh, order to Doug Adams, who was the general manager of Rochester, to tell Cherry to play Serge Aubrey tonight. And we were in Springfield, and it was, and we had two or three games to go, and we had we had one game to go actually. <laughs> this keeps going back and forth. And I didn't. He said, okay. and I said, I'm not playing him. And I knew I was fired right away when I said. Who is who is the other goalie? Is it Serge Aubrey. And the other go- goalie was Lynn Zimmerman. Oh, it was Lynn Zimmerman. Lynn, yeah. Lynn Zimmerman. Who has your car still? And he was a great. He could really. He was a good goalie. So he says, okay, then. And, and he says, you're going to play the rookie tonight. And well, I figured we we're a man short. Why not? What do I got to lose? Yeah, okay. I never forget. I think his name Doug Wessner. I think his name was. Anyhow. I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live. I was sitting in the dressing room. I don't didn't like to watch warm up. I was sitting in the dressing room and the trainer came in. I remember that I can see the dressing room now. He says, Zimmy's got a broken hand. I said, Jimmy's got a broken hand. He says, yeah, Zimmerman's got broken hand. And I said, don't, I know who did it. D- don't tell me, I know who did it. The rookie did it, didn't he? And he looked at me and he said, yeah. And what happened was Zimmy was tired, a little tired, and in the warm-up he wasn't paying attention or he wouldn't have broke his hand. Broke his hand. And the next game, how did we get into this? The next game, we're playing Cincinnati. And he plays, and Floyd Smith's a pretty good guy. He played the backup goalie. Backup goalie was fantastic. How did, so, oh, yeah. So, anyhow, we didn't make the playoffs. We missed it by, what, we missed We by missed it by one point. We had to have, we had to have the win. We were up one nothing. They Tied scored. Didn't even count. You they, had to win. You had to win, and then we scored with. Um, uh, they scored one shot. One shot in the third period to tie it up. One one. We outshot two, them two, two. seventeen to one. And they and that was it. So we missed it by one. Missed it by one, but didn't matter. Didn't matter how good I was or good coach or anything. I knew I was fired. So I go, I go in, and Phyllis was the was the secretary. Yes. And Mike was the PR guy. So I walk in. They knew I. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. He'd Ball, already yeah. told him I'd been fired. Yeah, they were. So happy. I walked in. I never forgot this. And he's smoking a little wee cigar, one of those little wee cigarillos or something. And he says, "We're making a change in your department." <laughs> I think who's the poor guy in our department? And it was me. And uh, a lot of guys, you know. It's unbelievable. I, you know, it's funny. It, it, it's it's funny, but it's not funny. It it because what happens is it, it, you don't think of the guy's family. And I remember I had coming home. And so have you ever had to fire someone? Have you ever had to fire someone? No, I never thought. I've, but you're sending guys down those almost. I send guys down. down. I remember Dougie, Gilm, Dougie Gibson. He was the MVP. Of oh, the, yeah. yeah he very was, good looking, I remember. Good, yeah. Dougie, Gil, good, Dougie blonde-haired Gibson. Blonde-haired guy, and, and he was really good. And uh, I never, ever told a guy he was going down, or I never, I, I, I'm, excuse me, I always told a guy that was going down, or he wasn't playing, or, and, um, uh, it was it's tough. So Andy Savard, I let him go home. And Harry Harry Sinden, who was the general manager of Boston, you let him go home up. I think he come from way up north or somewhere. And he says, you let him go home? Oh, I said, you know, he wants to visit his mom and dad. It's Christmas and everything. He says, you let him go home. You up there, you could get caught in a storm. And sure enough, we're playing in Buffalo. He can't make it out of the, out of the you know, he can't fly out of where he is. So we pick up Dougie Gibson. And I remember Dougie got two goals or something like that, and 
And I don't know. And I had to tell him, uh, and we had a couple of games then, and I had to tell him he was going back down. Boy, that was tough. Anyhow, I got fired. And <laughs> as I'm walking out, uh, the secretary, she she snickered, and he snickered. And I get outside the door, and I, you know, fuckers, they knew I'd get fired. Do you think he'd, why laugh at me? Well, they didn't like you. There no, was they didn't no like question. Because no. they liked, cause they liked the, the GM. They liked Doug yeah, Adams. Yeah, they liked Doug Adams. And... Uh, I come back. I remember what I said to him. I said, you know, you people shouldn't laugh at me. I'm like a bad penny. I come back. <laughs> and sure enough. Because I remember when then the next year it followed is that you did come back and you were made coach. Uh, yeah, and I remember you carried them for like two or three weeks because they knew that month. they were oh, about a, a month, month and a half. And even mom said, when are you going to fire them? Because not because she wanted them fired, but she knew you were torturing them. I never spoke to them. Well, but they knew it was coming, so you let them go and let them go and think they were going to keep them and, and the whole they, deal. In fact, now that I talk, think about it, the, uh, she, they went to the owners, uh, Phyllis, the uh, you had a, You had a nickname, I won't even say what it no, is, no, no, but, but it rhymes with, with no, Phyllis. No, I won't say what she was. <laughs> and and uh, they, she went to the owners, and I, the owners that saw me after a game, and they said, uh, uh, here, you're mean to the, to the secretary. I said, how can yeah. I be mean to her? I never even talked to her. Yeah, well, that's, you know. So that's being mean. Quit. That's being mean because you were carrying them until you, you and, did and, fire And we, and we got the guys nine and I, how did I get it? Oh, guys uh, being fired. Yeah. I have, to, I, I think the funniest one, well, I shouldn't say, they're, they're never funny when they get no, fired. No, I think though, the, you talk about that. The worst one that you've told me was when you were in construction and they brought everybody into the room. Oh, Whitey, I remember I was in the room. I knew I, I shouldn't have been. I, I, Whitey kept me around. Like I was a new guy. Uh, I would only been there a year, and guys have been there longer. And it was a bad time. It was a night. It was about nineteen seven. Well, it was seventy three. S- seventy s- there. Right, yeah. right, right. When uh, the big it was a big uh, recession. Recession. Yeah, yeah. gas prices. So anyhow, high. I'm gone, and he called all the guys in the room, and like th- they had to do this. this. Is what they did. Uh, we really appreciate so and so, and I remember a carpenter. He was really a good carpenter. He was gone, and Whitey had told me that, I, and because he was a friend of mine, <laughs> the only reason I stand there was because of Whitey, and uh, and and he told me I was going to stay, and uh, I remember, and I never forgot this. Here's a guy that had been through the war, Mount Casino, uh, you know, team guys blowing up and everything. And um, he, he told his guys, and then he come to me, like it was about 50 guys in the room. And he says, Don Cherry's got to go. And he started to cry. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you know. I, but that must have been tough. Like everybody waiting to know if their names were being Well, they called. knew that we knew before. But yeah. we, I didn't know. Yeah. The other, because he didn't have the nerve to tell me. And then the other one too, I think, is... Uh, you weren't really fired, but it was a mutual agreement is when you were trying to sell cars and a guy said something to you. Oh, yeah. I, got, I, was, I was selling a car. You, so I, you were a, a... I was the world's worst salesman. But they were Cadillacs and they were pretty. Yeah, but and they we were the world's worst salesman. I, and he, and um, I grabbed the guy by the... Uh, and, he guy, and the guy said, oh, you car salesman are like... <laughs> and I grabbed him, nailed him against the wall. I knew I... And you know, I, I knew I was gone. I was the world's, I, I should have been gone. I was the world's worst car salesman in the world. Anyhow, but I think the worst I've ever heard of guys being fired is, uh, the worst I've ever heard is uh, Billy Ray. He, was, he, he won the Stanley Cup, I think, with the, oh, he did win the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks. And he was, he was on the road, and he's taking his coat off, and a, and a note is slipped underneath the door. You're fired. I, the guy didn't even tell him. His note was slipping off the door. But I think the funniest one, if you want to know the funniest one, is Harry Neal tells the story, told me the story, that he was in a hotel room after a game after a loss, and Roger Nielsen and him are having a pint. And, and so Harry was a GM? Harry's a GM, and, and Roger Nielsen is, is a coach. So he gets a call. Well, as he's sitting there, he gets a call, and Roger, Roger's sitting over there. And he says, um, I want you to fire Roger. And so he's at the owner. That's the owner. It's phoning. 
He says, I want you to fire Roger. And uh, <laughs> Harry says, I, I can't do that. I can't fire him. And Roger's sitting right there. And he says, you know, Harry, it'd be f- too bad if two guys, <laughs> if I let two guys go. And Roger was fired. Oh, gee. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of funny. Oh. Um, another funny one ter- uh, Harry tells, Harry is a funny guy. I guess it's not funny, but he's going, he's in the Windsor and he's, he's coaching Detroit and he goes underneath the tunnel and he says, we have big news about uh, Harry Neal. <laughs> he went under the tunnel and he couldn't hear the radio. No. <laughs> yeah. So he gets out in the radio. So now he goes into the guy and he, you know, he was fired. <laughs> big news. He didn't, <laughs> and he, but the, he went underneath the tunnel and... Uh, He's a funny guy. Harry, Harry had all funny stories like that. We have a pint or two, and he'd tell them. I think you know one of the worst they, uh, you know, having a guys being fired and everything was uh, Mike Ganscombe. You remember Mike Ganscombe? He used to be on television. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's I, been yeah, there's been a lot of people fired. Oh, a lot of guys fired. Well, look at all the guys that fired. TS, TSN and Sportsnet. Yeah. Yeah, they they didn't. Anyhow, well, I didn't do bad myself getting fired, but. I remember Mike Ansco telling me one time that he did the news, and my, my mother used to just love him. Mike Ansco is he he blind. Because he came on at, at uh, 5.30, right after The Young and the Restless, that the family used to oh, watch. Oh, is that why? Yeah, because he, then they wouldn't even go to a break to a commercial. It would just end the Y&R, and then it would go to him. And I remember, you remember what your mom said all the time? Oh, yeah. She said, she He's said, got a... What's you know she? Mike Ansco? I said, well, I know him pretty good. He says, well, tell him to smile. He's got a beautiful smile. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Anyhow, he, he was telling me about the time he did the news. He had no idea at all. And they, they said, uh, we'd like to see you up, uh, you know, up, upstairs and that. And he said, uh, I went upstairs. He said, you're fired. <laughs> like, just like that. He's he like, was the guy that invited you for lunch and then had an apple. <laughs> that was a funny yeah, story. He, he probably, I love people that invite you to lunch and then don't eat. <laughs> yeah, and he, 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 he said, okay, you have to come out and... I had a big kidney pie. I didn't really eat yeah, much. Yeah, so you, you, okay, kidney yeah, pie, okay, you kidney go full pie. tilt. So I'll have an apple. <laughs> what do you invite me all the way out here? You have an apple. And then you look like, you know, you're, you know. Uh, no, I think. Oh. Anyhow. Well, Dad, I think that's good. We're, we're running a little bit late today. We got a lot of stuff to talk about next week. And uh, we'll talk, you know, maybe the one thing we'll talk about is um, uh, uh, Chef, Lee from, Chef Lee from Winnipeg really got criticized because uh, by the press because he says he didn't think analytics meant anything. Oh, and uh, so we can talk about your version on analytics and stats and stuff like that. Yeah. And they, I said the only stat I'd like, and we could talk about next week uh, that they don't have that I think they need to have is how many times a player gets hit. Not oh, that's not a good not how many times he hits, but how many times he get hits. I had a guy. Now what was his name? Clayton Bahal. Clayton Bahal. He was a good-looking guy. He was, you know, he could skate. He could do everything. And he used to lead our team in hits all the time. And I used to say to him, he could never understand. I said, you have to go in first in the corner and be hit. You, you can't let the other guy go in the corner. So what? You hit him, so what? You've got to go in and get the corner and get the puck out. He could never understand that, Clayton Ball. So it's, you would think you're almost a better hockey player if you get hit more because it shows that because you're, you're, in the, going in the you're going in the corner. You're going in the fray. Like last night, I won't say who it was, but there was a guy going into the corner, and he was there to get the puck, and he semi-pulled the chute, let the defenseman get the puck, move the puck, and then he hit the defenseman. And they go, oh, oh, oh he's really playing rough. And saying, yeah, but the guy got the puck out. He didn't want to get hit. That's why he... Pulled the shoot and let the defense me. I, 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 two guys on my team, or Boston Bruins, would 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 Wayne Cashman. He was always getting rammed into the boards, and Terry O'Reilly. Remember oh, Terry, yeah. Terry O'Reilly was always the first guy in, and they they were really they were, it was really something. So anyhow, yeah, that would be a. I don't I don't think they have that. They don't have that hit, but that's because I don't think they. They don't value it. They it. Don't, have, don't value it. But we'll talk about analytics next week. We'd again like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. And uh, we'll uh, happy belated St. Patrick's Day. And we'll uh, see you next week. Toodaloo.